Sagittarius, this is Tina with 85th House of Vibrations and welcome to This Just In. This is where we get all up in other folks' business about love and relationships. This reading will be good for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, and Rising. And if you would like to try to pull together a more complete picture of what could be going on with you for the month of June, I would encourage you to check your Moon and or Rising sign videos if you happen to know what they are. If you don't know your moon and or rising sign, and a way you could get that, you could go to astro.com. There are other sites that generate charts, but I always use astro. Uh, plug in your birth information. You'll need your accurate time of birth. You can still generate a chart without a time of birth, uh, but... It won't give you your rising sign and it won't uh, break the chart down into the 12 houses. You will, however, be able to see what signs the planets were in when you were born. Your own personal uh, astrological fingerprint. And it'll also show how your planets aspect each other in the chart. If you don't want to make a chart but you still want to know you can shoot me an email and uh, give me your birth information and I'll be happy to generate the chart for you it's easy it's no problems <clears throat> this is a general reading so it probably will not resonate with everybody Sagittarius for those of you who uh, have been around for a couple months and, and not just Sagittarius, cross watchers as well. I love that word. I, I hadn't heard that word before uh, until like a couple of months ago. Somebody said in the comments, I'm a cross watcher. I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. I like that. Anyway, um, so if you've been around for this just in over the last few months, you know, I usually use the Llewellyn Tarot. But uh, I want to switch it up. So this month we are using another fabulous deck. Sorry. This is uh, the Llewellyn Classic Tarot. I mean, I'm sorry. It's not the tarot. This is the Tarot of Dreams by Sirio Marchetti. Uh, Nine of Pentacles there on the bottom side. That's a good card. Uh, We'll get to this deck in a moment. Okay. So, clarifiers, I'm still using the writer to roll. I'm not using my little pocket size deck this month. I'm using a little full size deck, and, and uh, it has got the nice little description on it. Bottom card, a source of right rule. Sagittarius, come on now. This may be because your ruling sign is getting ready to go direct on the night. Uh, so, yeah, maybe this is a whole lot of things uh, going to start going good for you, Sagittarius, if it hadn't already. Let's hope those two cards we saw on the bottom are uh, reasons for. Uh, being optimistic. Sagittarius, who better to, to be optimistic than you? Right? That's what Sagittarius is about. So, uh, before we get started, let me go ahead and mention there is a full moon in your sign this month. It's happening on the night, the same day that your ruling planet goes direct. So, Sagittarius, you know, you could be like you know how how it is at the horse races those horses just come busting out of the gate oh yeah and you're sagittarius half man half beast half man half the centaur so you know yeah that was a good analogy thing about sagittarius is that um full moon's happening in your sign and that's usually pretty great think about it though is when you try to bust out of that gate Saturn's going to be standing there gate blocking. The full moon in Sagittarius conjuncts Saturn. 
um, I, I didn't, I only found this out today that Black Moon Lilith is, is going to be uh, conjunct Saturn and your full moon. I'm not going to get into Black Moon Lilith because she's like a wet fish for me. I can't hold her. You know, that's, I, I understand what she represents. I understand the backstory. I understand those things clearly. But uh, she baffles me and maybe that's her job. So, uh, you, you know, I don't talk about Lilith much because I, I still got some work to do on that one. Uh, anyway, but I thought I'd mention it. Probably made me sound a little bit smarter. Well, so all of that to say, Sagittarius, that, you know, when your planet goes direct on the 9th and you've got this full moon, Um, just don't be surprised if uh, it's not as full throttly uh, that's, I just made that up as full throttly as you had hoped now don't be too mad at Savvy he's also in retrograde so you know it probably wouldn't be as bad as if he were direct and Saturn's been retro I mean Saturn's been in your sign for a while now so you know you should be kind of knowing how Saturn is by now Sagittarius so anyway your full moon conjunct Sagittarius I'm sorry conjunct Saturn you know, you're going to want to do your Sagittarius thing. And Saturn's going to try to be the boss of you. The thing about it, though, is he, Saturn actually means well. His delivery is just jacked up. Uh, Saturn just wants you to be sure that you're not wasting all your energy and time out here going after, you know, you know just so gung-ho you know your positive sign you're optimistic and even if you don't like to uh, physically explore you know or move around um, you will do so in the mind you you know your Sagittarius rules higher learning and higher consciousness and publishing long distance travel farm things and uh, spirituality uh, you know it's all good so whether you're trying to physically move forward or not you know this could just be you ready to move forth with some new spiritual ideas that you've you know uh, come into and, and now you're ready to give it a go you're ready to give it your all and Saturn's gonna say yeah, no. What do you know about this thing you're about to receive? Is it worth your time and energy? And, you know, Saturn's going to be like, Luke, Sage, I've been here in your house for a while now. I feel like I'm part of the family. I run this. You're not going to be out here making me look bad, running around all willy nilly. What is it that you're going after? Let's talk about this. And you may feel like, you know, the kid who's trying to go out, you know, or the young teenager who's trying to go out and mingle and be with their friends. And, you know, you've got that authority figure, whether it's mom or dad, saying, hold up, but wait, do you know what you're getting into? Do you know what the repercussions might be if things go wrong? Are there consequences to what you might do? Again, is it worth it? Is this something that you can use in the long run? You know, when you when you go out, when you're home with your parents and you go out in the street, I don't know about your parents, but, you know, my mom's like, you're not going to go out here and make me look bad. You're not going to embarrass me in these streets. 
And that's what Saturn is saying. When, when your planet goes direct and you've got this big full moon <clears throat> in your sign and, you know, you're just ready to go. And Saturn's going to say, no, because you're not going to make me look bad out here in these streets. So, you know, hold up. Slow your roll. So, it, it's not all bad. You may feel a little limited. A little held back. You know, but it's, 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 it's okay. Saturn is trying to help. He's just doing it in his own way. So let's see what the first card is. Okay. We got the Ten of Cups reversed. Um, I'm sorry if you hear a lot of noise in the back. My window is open. And, you know, um, somebody's out there just yelling. Anyway, Ten of Cups reversed. This is a Mars and Pisces card. It's reversed though, so Mars doesn't like to be in water signs. Let's start there. Okay. I'm sorry. It's a bunch of kids outside, and I, I'm sorry. Let me close the window. Hold on. Okay, I don't know what's going on outside, but they are really going for it. So I had to close the window. I apologize. Back to it. Ten of Cups reversed, Mars and Pisces. Like I said, Mars doesn't like to be in water signs because Mars is fire. So what happens when it gets in water? You know, the fire can get put out. You know, and, and then what's left is steam. And it's steam is useful. Very. Uh, it's just not as explosive as fire and, and Aries, I mean, and my Mars just ain't having it. So Mars and Pisces is like, ugh. Okay. It's just what I said a moment ago. Mars is wanting to move. Can you picture a fireball trying to swim through, you know, maybe a, a swimming pool? River. So can you see a fireball trying to smoke? Yeah, he's that's putting some stress on his little fire life. So that's how Mars feels in Pisces. Okay. So for whatever reason, there is something that is keeping you from feeling that sense of emotional completion. Wanting to move. Wanting to accumulate. You know, wanting to have this very happy, loving space. And this is a relationship reading. So Sagittarius, maybe something is going on in the home. Now, let's not forget that Pisces is is uh, is a two fish that's that's you know they're trying to go in two different directions. They're canceling each other out in a sense. Nobody's like getting anywhere because one fish is trying to go one way and the other fish is trying to go the other way. So, uh, you know, Pisces can be a little confused in its movement. And, and Mars has a, a problem with that because Mars knows exactly what he's trying to do. And there ain't no two ways about it. Mars just does. You know, Pisces is going to feel a way about how he does things. Even if he still doesn't do them in the best way, he's still going to feel when he does things, when he moves. His intent is felt. His motives are felt, Pisces. Mars is the soldier. He's the warrior. He's the, you know, you say it. Go get them, boy. And, and Mars is off. <laughs> Mars is colored by the sign that he's in. You know, so like I said, there's no two ways about it with Mars. And, and, and that, that can make it difficult for Mars to be in the sign of Pisces. That's, that's conflict. 
So Sagittarius, um, maybe there's some conflict within your home, within your family, or, or there's some sort of reason why you you feel like you're falling short of this total emotional fulfillment. There's something you feel like you can't complete. Sagittarius, like the sign of Pisces, it's ruled by Neptune. It's water. Water blends. There's no boundaries. You know, that's one thing about Neptune energy is boundaries. What's that? Man, I'm going to blend right on in with the rest of this. And, and that's not always good. I have Neptune in the first house, retrograde, so. There's sometimes when I physically feel like I'm not in this dimension. I mean, it's 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 crazy. Anyway, um, so I'm feeling like something could be going on uh, where Sagittarius, you or somebody else is wanting to blur the lines of some particular relationship. You're wanting to lose the boundaries. You're wanting to be able to express your emotions, to show your emotions. You want to put some action to those, like, watery feelings. That, you know, you know that lovey-dovey, cutesy-wootsy stuff. You know, this upright, this is... Like, this is exactly what you want. And maybe there's a reason that you can't do that. It may not necessarily be that something has gone wrong in your home. It just may be that the action that you want to move forward on, you know, you're like, forget the boundaries or somebody else is. You want to complete something with somebody, but for some reason you can't. See what the next part is. Honey, Sagittarius, I've been talking to you for 17. Wait a minute. If I've been talking to you for 17 minutes and we only pulled one card, good goodness. The death card. Ah, transformation. Sex, death, and regeneration. This is the Scorpio card. It's the 13th major arcana. One and three is four. I'm feeling like somebody's wanting to build something. You may be at a place in a relationship where you're ready to get deeper. Uh, what the relationship was is, is not what it is now and 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 you guys know it um but I'm feeling like there's a reason why you can't transform this relationship into exactly what you want it to be it can't I, it, it can't be this. You know, Scorpio rules the eighth house. And these are things that are purposely hidden. Twelfth house is things that are hidden that we don't often know about. But things in the eighth house are things that we personally have. This is a Scorpio card that rules the eighth house. So this could be the reason maybe that, that, that this can't come together this transforming of the relationship can't happen this completion can't happen is because maybe it's something taboo that's going on
And Sagittarius, if you are caught up with some sort of Scorpio, Sun, Moon, or Rising, ooh, I guess I understand. Yeah. Very magnetic energy. You either uh, are terribly fascinated by Scorpio or you're repulsed by Scorpio. And you're still fascinated. The only reason is that people are generally uh, repulsed by Scorpios is because they feel their power and they're afraid of it. But whatever this is, this doesn't have to be a Scorpio, but I feel like you want this energy. Uh, but you can't really have it. Thing about it though is, wait a minute. I'm, I'm actually giving the Ten of Cups too much power here because the Scorpio is the major, I think. Uh, so anything can happen. This is a minor opinion. She trumps this all day long. So maybe it's Sagittarius that you have wanted something to happen. You have wanted something to change. Uh, and you know, like, maybe it could. This card definitely has the power. That's going to be something scary, though. If you, I feel like if, if whatever's going on here, if, if you guys decide to go the distance, it's not going to be easy. But it'll probably be a little bit. Oh, okay. Emperor reversed. This is the misappropriation of power. And that's another major arcana. So now we got both these guys. This is the Aries card. This is the Scorpio card. And they both are actually ruled by Mars. The, the traditional ruler for Scorpio is uh, is Mars. And, and Mars still rules Aries. The modern ruler for Scorpio is Pluto. So they definitely have something in common. Uh, both being ruled by Mars. But as you can see, the Scorpio is the dark. And Aries is the light. The extrovert and the introvert. So, but with the emperor reversed, um, like I said, this is a misappropriation of power. This is somebody who rules with an iron fist. Oh, gosh. I, I hate to say this word. If I have to say bully one more time. But he's kind of showing up in everybody else's room. So yeah, he can he can be a bully. This is somebody who can certainly force what he wants. Let's see. Uh Sagittarius. Huh. Sagittarius, um, yeah, Aries on the fifth house cusp, and that's the, the house of casual relationships. Ooh, we, mm. I feel like somebody is just doing what they want to do despite the consequences, and they dare somebody to say something about it. I feel like somebody is like, I'm going to do what I want to do. Um, and I'm going to make this transformation happen. I don't care who doesn't like it. Anymore, I don't even care who sees it. Because I think I said last month, Spork, uh, 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 Sagittarius, that there may have been something that was going on in secret 
And now people was, people knew about it. Maybe you thought they didn't know. I don't think you care that they know. And this is just for some of you. But um, and now these people are starting to see you differently. Maybe as this emperor reversed. And it doesn't have to be because you scared them to death. But they have got this feeling that you just don't give a damn. You're still powerful in their eyes, but it's like, oh, okay, now we see how you're using that power. See how you're using that energy. I feel like somebody's playing house, though. But, you know, that this is big business. Yeah, that's cute if you're playing house because you can't quite have house. But these two cards? Uh, ooh. Yeah, you playing with the big boys. Let's pull a clarifier. Six of swords reversed. Actually, um, <laughs> the six of swords reversed is somebody who um, thrives under pressure. They, they like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's on this card, I'm sure. Hold on. Let's see what it is. Let's read it. You are able to rise to the occasion when necessary. You thrive under adversity. Trouble is uh, invigorating and you're bored when life is too easy. Challenges are really just opportunities. Quick responses and fast thinking. Action is needed. Your instincts are good. Okay, so, uh, yeah, like I said before, you, the challenges, this is what I'm doing, I don't give a damn, step to me if you want to, Sagittarius, looks like you're looking for some action, and, um, you do what you got to do to get it. Mm -hmm. Hmm. How you know the thing about it though is okay that that that's all good and stuff like that you know it it. it uh, it certainly sounds like an adventure, you know, and, and some people do live for, for that type of adventure. But, you know, while all of this is going on with you, there's some sort of breakdown in communication. And the thing about it is, maybe what you're doing is causing some problems in your home in the home that you're currently in. If you're trying to make a home with somebody else and you're doing some things in secret. <laughs> Sagittarius, I wanna say, if you're in a, uh, like an extramarital affair or secret relationship, be careful, you know, Things could be getting sloppy, you know, and 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 due to a particular amount of confidence or even arrogance, your slip is starting to show. Uh, that's that's for my forty and ups. Um, <laughs> for some of the younger demographic. If you don't know what a slip is, it is a garment that a woman used to wear up under her dress or skirt so that nobody could see her silhouette through the material of the skirt. I don't know when the slip became extinct, but that is probably why a lot of you won't know what it is. 
But for my 40 and up crowd, your slip is starting to show. Now, whether you care or not is a different story. But please understand, Sagittarius, like the other fire signs, Aries and Leo, which I am a Leo, the fire signs can get a little cocky, a little overconfident. Take on that, you know, this is our world and you run around in it type of attitude. Um, you know, all I want to say is don't do that at the expense of another person. Um, the heart wants what it wants, but, um, you know, People can get hurt in the process. And Sagittarius, with this full moon happening in your first house, this is your full moon. You know, this is this is the physical body. It's Aries. You know, I just oof. uh all I gotta say is don't let the spirit of cockiness or arrogance transform your life and your situation in such a way that you um, like take a fall. With, you know, like with your reputation, your status. I don't mean that somebody's necessarily going to do something physically to you. Uh, Unless Sagittarius, you have somebody else and they find out that you have a secret relationship with, you know, yeah, then you might fall for real because uh, <laughs> they might try to get rich and put them paws on you. So, um, everybody's got to live their life the way that they want to live it. And that's one thing I'm not here to tell you how to live your life. I'm just calling it as I see it, the way that universe that the the the, the way that the universe uh, is giving it to me, and even still, it's still the way that I interpret it and give it to you. At the end of the day, nobody's perfect. Everybody's got a few skeletons in the closet. We have all abused our power or abused something at one point in our life. And I'm not saying that that's what you're doing. All I'm saying is, if you are doing something that society deems as inappropriate or unacceptable, great. It's your life, you gotta live it. If I had a dime for every time I did something inappropriate or unacceptable, shit, I'd at least have a better camera, a better setup. <laughs> so yeah, one thing I'm not here to do is judge and tell a person how to live their life. I like excitement too. I'm a Scorpio rising and a Scorpio moon, so I understand all of this very well. What I do want to say, though, is if this sounds like your situation, Sagittarius, because this has turned into a very specific message, so a lot of you are going to be like, what the hell? That's not me. I'm sorry, guys, but this was specific. So for those of you who this message fits, it's fine. Do you. Get it how you live. Just be sure you consider others in the process. Just use some discretion. I'm not condoning or uncondoning. I know that's not a word. Anything one way or another, I'm neutral as fuck. I just wanted to pass down a little friendly advice. 
Just use some discretion. Just be nice. Mm -hmm. Don't let your on undergarments show. And that's the way I see it, Sagittarius. So if anybody would like a personal reading with me, you can contact me at Tina at 85th House Vibrations.net. Uh, love it if you follow me on Facebook and or Twitter at 855 E I G H T, the number 5 V I B E. For all of you who are watching, thank you so much. For those of you who might be watching for the first time, thank you so much for clicking on this video and giving it a chance. And for those of you who are back again, once again, for the foolishness again, you know, I love that too. Really appreciate it. So thank you, and I hope to talk to you guys again next month.